Folks, what's up? This is Michael in the wee hours of the night. One more time with your daily trivia question once again. And welcome to the weekend. And it looks like we're going to pack up February and send it on down the road. It's like been like the longest month, though, it seems. For, the, for it to technically be the shortest month, it's taken forever to get there. My goodness gracious. But March is on the way. So anywho, the answer to the previous trivia question was Hustler Magazine. So Hustler Magazine is hardcore por pornographic magazine compared to the modest publications, if you will, of that category. Whatever. It's It was first published in 1974. So I'm not going to go into like Hustler Magazine by any means whatsoever, even though that was somewhat the focus of the trivia question. The landmark case, however, Hustler Magazine Incorporated versus Falwell of 1988 is more significant. This was a landmark decision of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling where the court, high court held that first, the First Amendment to the Constitution protects a caricature, parody, or satire of public figures that a reasonable person would not have interpreted as factual. Gets kind of tricky. The, the verbiage there does. This was a unanimous decision, eight to zero. So Hustler Magazine published a parody ad depicting televangelist Jerry Falwell Sr. as an incestuous drunk. It was poor taste. It was horrible. It was just it was trashy is what it was. So Falwell sued for emotional distress, and the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit agreed with Falwell. He had initially been war awarded $200,000 for his lawsuit. Flint, however, took the case to the Supreme Court and they overturned the ruling of all the lower court's judgment. So when the Supreme Court does that, what they say is the law of the land. This was under the assertion that the parody was protected speech since Falwell was a public figure and the parody could not have been reasonably considered believable. When you get into cases like this, what is considered reasonable is often kind of the telltale. However, this was an eight to zero decision. So the emotional distress inflicted on Falwell by the ad was not a sufficient reason to deny the First Amendment protection to public officials and figures. No matter how disgusting, distasteful, or offensive that it most certainly was. In speaking for the court, Chief Justice Rehnquist concluded, quote, the fact that society may find speech offensive is not a sufficient reason for suppressing it. It's a famous quote on behalf of free speech. Falwell died in 2007. Flint died last year in 2021. The story and the landmark cases depicted in the 1996 movie, The People vs. Larry Flint, starring Woody Harrelson. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's a pretty pretty good movie, actually. The case is often cited and referenced, as a, and rightly so, as a significant example of freedom of speech. Here's a little factoid, geek factoid, that I found out about these two and this landmark case. These two went on to get along. They were actually pretty well, uh, pretty close with each other. They appeared together on Larry King Live on CNN later on, and they went on a college circuit tour to discuss the significance of freedom of speech and First Amendment issues. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. So that is uh, The People versus Larry Flint and Hustler Magazine versus Falwell from 1988. All right, folks, let's get the weekend started. That would bring us to today's trivia question for February 26th. On this day, in 1917, President Woodrow Wilson learns of a proposal of a Mexican-German alliance when officials had interpreted this coded message named after the German foreign secretary who sent it. Good luck, folks. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.